Good morning. Welcome to the Gospel of Joy. I apologize for the, again, for the last time, for the um, technical difficulties we had yesterday. Um, I, uh, I was going to say something. Well, it, I'll try to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, but thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Gospel of Joy. My name is Reverend Josh Knappenberger. I'm the pastor of St. James UCC in Allentown, PA. If you have been joining us for this last week, thank you and welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome and I hope you enjoy this enough to come back tomorrow. And if not, I hope to have given you enough laughs to get you through the day. Now, I got my buddies with me. This is Barricade. He's uh, one of the bad guys from um, the first 2007 Transformers movie. He's got a nasty little spinner there. And the, the other buddy I have is, he's from the original TV show. And he is part of a group called the Predacons, and there are five of these that combine to make a big Transformer. So I think what I'm going to do from now until Friday is I'm going to show you uh, a different piece of these guys, and then on Friday I'll show you the big guy. Um, but this is, uh, he transforms to a rhinoceros, and because it's Palm Sunday, I tried to find a donkey or even a horse to show you, one that transforms into a donkey or a horse. I couldn't find one. Uh, the bull is the closest I could get get to. So, um, yeah, uh, Jesus didn't ride in ride into Jerusalem on a bull, but it's the closest type of animal transformer I could get for today. And today is Palm Sunday, and if you watched yesterday, if you got to watch yesterday, good morning, Carl. How you doing? Which I hope you watched anyway, even though it wasn't at ten thirty like it normally is. Um, I asked you to bring some tambourines, some New Year's noisemakers, uh, some branches with leaves on, some pieces of cloth, because we're going to have a parade for Jesus, welcoming Jesus into our hearts just the way they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem. And we're going to do that right now. We're going to go nuts. I got my daughter's tambourine. Good morning, Michael and Marie. Um, I got my daughter's tambourine, and I went through a lot to get her to let me use this. Um, so we're going to go a little nuts for a couple minutes here, maybe a couple seconds. I don't know how long this is going to go. But like I said, we're going to go a little nuts. And um, if you're worried about being embarrassed in front of your family for hooting and hollering about this, remember – I'm the one who's going to be embarrassed in front of the whole world because of how crazy I'm going to go. So, all right. Here comes Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he. He's coming into our hearts. Oh, my gosh. Such joy and wonder. Ah, this is the third joyous day in our in our year with Christmas and Easter. We're welcoming Jesus into our hearts. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh, what a day for the gospel of joy. What a day for joy. Uh, thank you. That was wonderful. At least for me. <laughs> Oh, geez. Okay. Is my mic not working? Morning mic and unaired. Hmm. Can somebody tell me if my microphone's working? If not, don't say anything. Huh. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm sorry that my mic isn't working and you're not hearing me.
Oh, it is. Okay, thank you, Carl. Your your, your comment confused me. Thank you. Um, so it does work. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, after the technical difficulties yesterday, I was a bit a uh, bit worried. So, all right. Welcome Jesus into your hearts today. He's coming on a donkey, which is, which in today's terms would probably be a Yugo. Imagine if Jesus came to your house and your town in a Yugo and everybody had a parade for him. And that's what today is about. Welcoming Jesus into our hearts and into our lives as the King of Kings. So it's Sunday, so we're going to have communion but first before communion we're gonna ha we're gonna have our jokes first on with the funnies all right let's see here. we're on to bloopers that gnash the teeth and this blooper was sent in april 12th 1998 and a Sunday bulletin of Crystal Cathedral, Garden Grove, California. Remembering prayer, Matilda, the last name isn't mentioned, she's awaiting surgery to remove a large brain behind the eye instead of a large brain tumor. And this is a saying from comedian Bob Newhart, which many of you know. People with a sense of humor tend to be less egocentric. They are more humble in moments of success and less defeated in times of travail. And that's what this is about, to make sure we are humble in uh, times of success. But right now we are all, go, all going through a time of travail to make sure we are less defeated. And let's see what we have here. Okay, this is sent in by George Goldtrap. A small boy ran home and excitedly told his parents, school will be dismissed for good on, fr on Friday, March 28th. I just don't believe that, his mother said. It's true, the boy said. I just got this note from the teacher. The teacher's note said, school will be dismissed at 11 a.m. for good Friday, March 28th. And this one was sent in by Stan Toller, and it's, it's another you might be a preacher if. You might be a preacher if you've ever wanted to wish people a Merry Christmas at Easter, because that's the next time you're going to see him. This one was sent in by Jim Reed from the funny side of fishing. Last year, more people applied for fishing license than marriage license. Does that tell you something? In a, this one sent in by Reverend Henry E. Riley Jr. of Chesterfield, Virginia. In a retirement community in the Phoenix, Arizona area, a retired man was sitting on the, in the kitchen eating a big breakfast his wife had prepared and reading the morning paper. Good morning, Joni. His wife, on the other hand, was bustling around the apartment. She had both the dishwasher and the clothes dryer going, and she was pushing the vacuum cleaner. Her husband looked up from the newspaper and said to her, I'm proud of you. What did you say, the woman shouted over the noise. I'm proud of you, the husband repeated. I'm tired of you, too, she replied. And this is a cartoon, so I'll show it to you. It's a woman with a man trying to drag him into a discussion group. And she says, oh, come on, sweetheart. They're just going to try to evaluate the first hundred days of our marriage. Hi, Deb. How are you? And that can be pretty scary for, well, <laughs> to try and evaluate the first nine years of my marriage. That would be pretty daunting. Okay, this is... Sent from Carl Harsney of Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. 
Ruth Anderson, council president of Covenant Community Church in Akron, Ohio, took her four-year-old granddaughter from Massachusetts into her Ohio home while her parents were on vacation. Although her parents were not regular churchgoers, her grandparents are, and they took the girl to Sunday school and church two Sundays in a row. When her parents returned, the girl was eager to tell them all that she had done. They have a place that they go to here in Ohio, she told them. They call it church. And this is the last five in the top ten ways to tell if your church is spirit-filled. Number five, there is an influx of people asking, is there something I can do? New classes and small groups have to be formed because so many people want to teach. People offer their seats to newcomers. New altar rails have to be installed to handle the crowds. The congregation douses the pastor with a cooler of water at the end of the service. Oh, <laughs> I get it now. Let, let me read it again. The congregation douses the pastor with a cooler of water at the end of the service. Those were sent in by Reverend Jeff Hanna. And, you know, I think I did the uh, the parade thing maybe at a uh, – there was a better time to um, – uh, I think after the jokes was a better time because it's leading up to it. Uh, remember, comment – in the comments about which joke you like most. And I think we're going to do the parade thing again. At least I am. You don't have to from home, but I am. So, and remember, I'm the one who looks nuts in front of the, in front of the world in Facebook doing this. So, ah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He's coming into our hearts. Jesus is coming. Blessed is he. Hosanna in the highest. All right. I think that's a better way to lead up to our communion. To go from that energy and to use that energy into the solemnity of communion. So if you have with you your bread and your juice, bring it out now. And let us pray. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life. Oh, first of all, let me just say this. I didn't say this last week. This is communion. This is the Lord's table. And we welcome all who profess Jesus Christ to commune with us and be a part of our community, to share in his body and share in his blood today and every Sunday that we take communion. So, uh... Join me in prayer. Holy God, we praise and bless you for creation and the gift of life and for your abiding love, which brings us close to you, the source of all blessing. We thank you for revealing your will for us in the giving of the law and in the preaching of the prophets. We thank you especially that in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, born of Mary, to live in our midst, to share in our suffering, and to accept the pain of death at the hands of those whom Jesus has loved. We rejoice that in a perfect victory over the grave, you raised Christ with power to become sovereign in your realm. We celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to gather your church by which your work may be done in the world and through which we share the gift of eternal life. With the faithful in every place and time, we praise with joy your holy name. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread, gave you thanks, and broke the bread, gave, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them at this table, we may offer you our faith and praise and be one with you in the eternal realm. Amen.
In the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ gives. This is the body of Christ, and it has been broken that we may find our wholeness. Take and eat. And this is the blood of Christ poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Take and drink. Now let us give thanks for the gifts we've received. Holy God, we thank you for inviting us to your table where we have received the gifts of Christ and have received them well. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray when we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, I must confess, I tried to find a joke about, uh, about Palm Sunday. And then I thought, maybe I can come up with my own. So I'm going to leave you with this joke. If you got kids listening, this one has a little bit of a, a, of a word you might not want them to hear. Or if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, uh, cover your ears. But here it goes. There was a church in America where they decided to use a crucifix instead of a cross. And so their cross had Jesus hanging on it while the pastor would bring it down the aisle every Sunday. And one Palm Sunday, a woman turned to her husband and said, I don't know why we're celebrating Jesus coming in to Jerusalem on a donkey today. He's carried by an ass into this church every week. So that one's a little bit off color with the language, but it's the closest I could I could come up with for a uh, for a Palm Sunday joke. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It's what I came up with. So again, comment. Let me know which joke you like the best, and uh, will you pray with me? Lord God, we give you thanks for bringing Jesus into Jerusalem and bringing Jesus into our hearts. Help us to invite Jesus into our hearts every day, not just today, but every day, that we may know his love and share his love with others, and that we may find laughter in the dark times to pull the joy from the sorrow. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Now may God keep you in the stitches of laughter and love today, tomorrow, and into eternal life. Amen.